If I square zero, I get zero. So actually, this ends up as the x squared is going to be greater than or equal to zero. Okay? And now, if we add one onto this, okay, one, if we add one right across here, this implies that one must be less than or equal to x squared plus one, which must be less than two. So effectively, what we have here is we have a we have an interval around x squared plus one. Uh, I suppose it's a, let's say it's, it's, it's closed on one side and it's open on the other, okay? Uh, so this is like, this is a half open, half closed interval, well, half closed, half open. But the most important thing is this, is that we've bounded, we've bounded x squared plus one below by one, and we've bounded it above by two. So what we now know is this, is that from, so from this particular fact here, that x minus zero all over the absolute value of x squared plus one, okay? Uh, what we know is that, let's let's try to find this in terms of, of x squared plus one. Let's see if we can substitute in a number for x squared plus one, but that makes this less than a specific value. That makes it less than x minus zero all over some number, okay? So, See, we're trying to find a number that's that's less than epsilon, okay? But let's just explore this particular ratio in terms of this particular this particular inequality now. So if x minus one, we have x minus zero, the absolute value of x minus zero all over the absolute value of x squared plus one, okay? And what we know from a fraction perspective, yeah, that if we take an amount and we divide it by a number, let's say four, okay? Well, that's definitely going to be less than the same amount divided by a smaller number, let's say three. We know that, that actually that that's actually that that's going to be true, okay? When these, let's say, what we have is these, these are positive positive numbers in this case. So what we now have is this: is that for me to ensure that this thing here is less than this thing over here, I need to divide this by a number that's less than, that's smaller than this number. This number needs to be bigger than whatever I divide over here by. But I know that this number is bigger than or equal to one. So now I can't divide it by one because it could take on that value. So if I divide it by any number that it's bigger than, well, it's bigger than or equal to one, which means that it's definitely going to be bigger than, let's say, for argument's sake, a third. So I could divide that by a third, okay? And this will still be true, okay? But what we want, we need, we need, don't forget, that this quantity be less than epsilon. So we also need this quantity to be less than epsilon. So we need the absolute value of x minus zero all over a third to be less than epsilon, which implies that x minus zero needs to be less than three times epsilon. So what we just figured out here is using the, using the conclusion and working it down, because we have a ratio here, we have that, we have that our, our, our premise is bounded, is bounded this time. Our premise is, sorry, tightly coupled uh, to this x squared plus one. So let's explore the premise, uh, the x minus, minus zero, uh, very close to zero. So let's say within one unit of it and see, can we understand what's happening with x squared plus one? And what we found is that x under this condition here, under this restriction, that x squared plus one is actually bounded below by one and bounded above by two. But more importantly, it's le it's greater than or equal to one. So if we divide x minus zero by any number that's that's smaller than this, it'll result in this number being bigger than this particular ratio. Okay? And let's just choose a number. We could choose any number that's less than one, okay? Any number over this side of the number line, okay? And I'm just choosing, choosing a third uh, for convenience. So here we go. So why don't we let delta, let delta, uh, equal three epsilon. So now we have two cases. We have the restriction situation when delta was equal to one. And we have what we found from the restriction with respect to x squared plus one, that delta could be chosen to be three times epsilon. So let's now do our proof. So our candidate deltas, our candidate, let's say, our candidate deltas now are, well, what are they? So let's just write this down here now. Our our candidate, candidate deltas, okay, are elements of one, three, epsilon, okay? So let's choose the min. Let's just choose the smaller of these two values. Now, we don't know which one is the smaller of these two values. So let's choose, let's choose delta to be, to be the min of one, 
three times epsilon. I don't know which one is which, but say, say for argument's sake, uh, say delta equals one is the min. Okay, let's say that for argument's sake that delta is equal to one is the min. So this is our first case. Yeah. So let's say that this is case case one. Okay. This is case one. Uh, for delta, for delta to be e for for delta equal to one. So this is our first case for delta equal to one. And what do we need to do? Well, we need to do our proof, don't we? We need to do our proof. Yes, we do. So let's just take. Let's say for argument's sake. So now we're choosing delta equal to one. So let's take epsilon. Let's take epsilon any epsilon greater than zero. Okay. And uh, then for each and every x satisfying 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 let's say that zero is less than the absolute value of x minus zero which is less than delta in this case is less than one okay well we know that this is positive yeah okay it has to be positive to delta okay uh, so this implies so this implies uh, that the absolute value of x minus zero is less than one which implies that the absolute value of x minus zero okay uh, divided by divided by the absolute value of x 